If you're over age 70 and a half, you can save taxes on your IRA distributions by using QCDs. We all like lower tax bills in retirement. Let's talk about four things you need to know before you're going to work with QCDs. Hi everyone, Thatcher Taylor, ProPath Financial here. We're going to talk about qualified charitable distributions. This is a really great way to save on taxes. We're first going to dive into three things you need to be aware of first before you do this. Then we're going to dive into a separate set of four rules that you need to know that are somewhat surprising when it comes to qualified charitable distributions. I'm also going to link below my original qualified charitable distribution video that'll tell you everything you need to know. We even go through the IRS publication, distributions, publication 590B that talks about distributions out of IRAs or tax deferred accounts. I'll hit that link below if you want to check that out. But since you're here, let's dive into it. All right, before you even start diving into qualified charitable distributions, you need to ask yourself three things. You need to answer these three questions as basically like your own little litmus test to figure out if this is going to fit in to your retirement plan. First, are you charitably inclined? This matters because for a qualified charitable distribution to qualify for the tax deduction or the reduction on your taxable income for the distribution of the IRA, you need to make sure that it goes to a 501c3 organization. And it has to be done with a direct transfer to them, which we'll talk about. So you got to find out if you're charitably inclined, if you even want to give some of your money to charity. That's the first question you need to ask yourself. The next question is, do you need the money? You need to figure out if the distributions coming from your IRAs, you're actually using them as income for living expenses in retirement. If you are going to use the money, using the charitability portion of this might be less valuable because you're going to have less money to spend. So that's why we got to go back to question one, how charitably inclined are you? So you need to make sure that the money that you're going to use for qualified charitable distributions is money that you don't need because when it's gone and it's directly transferred to charity, you don't get it back. And then question three, you got to answer this question right here. Do you even care? A lot of people don't even really care about this. They don't even want to dive into it. I've seen clients where you suggest this and they're like, ah, I don't even really care about that, where they don't really need the money, but they really want to spend it. They don't really care about paying the taxes. So you got to figure out if you even care about doing this. But once you answer these three questions, then we can move on to the finer details about how it works. All right, so let's dive into four things that might surprise you. The first one is age 70 and a half. Here's why that's surprising is because required minimum distribution, so the amount of money that is required by the IRS to be distributed from tax deferred dollars like IRAs, 401ks, SEPs, SIMPLES happens at age 672 now, which it might be a little bit later depending on what acts they pass here in the near future. But right now it's at age 72. You can do qualified charitable distributions at age 70 and a half. But here's the kicker, on or after age 70 and a half, So it's the year that you turn age 70 and a half, but it can only happen as a qualified charitable distribution on or after your birthday. You really need to be aware of that because if you try to do it early in planning, that's going to mess you up. That won't be a qualified charitable distribution. The reason I put this next piece of age 70 and a half is qualified charitable distributions can be done by beneficiaries of your IRA, but the same rules apply specifically the 70 and a half rule. You got to wait till you're 70 and a half. to, until you can do qualified charitable distributions. So qualified charitable distributions do not apply to all retirement accounts. But let's start with the ones that it does apply to. Traditional IRAs, I just put it as trad. Roth IRAs, yeah, those can even be done from Roth IRAs. I, don't, I mean, it's fine if you want to distribute the money and send it, you could. Rollover IRAs, which trad and rollovers are potato, potato. They're cut from the same cloth. SEPs and SIMPLES, you got to meet some guidelines. There are some additional rules especially if the contribution of from the employer is made for the plan year and in the calendar year. It, it's a whole bunch of things that come into play with that. But here's the deal. You could use a SEP and simple, just follow the rules. But employer plans, what do you think? Eh. Employer plans do not allow qualified charitable distributions, distributions, excuse me. That's why retirement planning is really important. So you can start to dive into which account types are going to be useful for your distribution strategy. So if you want to use this to avoid paying taxes on tax deferred dollars, because remember, 
a lot of these are taxable, not the Roth, but a lot of these are taxable. You need to figure out if rolling the money from your employer plan to take advantage of the QCDs makes sense. Number three, as always, there are limits. The IRS doesn't like to just let us wheel and deal however much we want to. We can give up to $100,000 in a given year from our tax deferred account types to charity and not have to put that on our tax return essentially. So that's a good amount. A lot of people will be utilizing that method. Even if they get to 100 grand, it's going to be a lot less, which is fine too. Any amount up to 100 grand will reduce down your taxable income. RMDs are second. So again, required minimum distributions. I'll hit a link below if you want to watch a video of mine on required minimum distributions. But required minimum distributions are second in priority. So here's what that means. If you had a $100,000 required minimum distribution and you took that entire $100,000 and directly sent it to the charity of your choice, instead of that required minimum distribution going on your tax return as income, that is tax-free. It will not go on your tax return as income because it's a qualified charitable distribution. That's the big advantage of the tax savings. All right, number four, this is a big one. This is really important. Procedurally, this needs to work out properly. So wherever your IRA, let's just assume IRAs at the moment, but wherever your accounts are held, which is your custodian, they usually are going to have a very specific procedure. Now, I've done this with a couple of firms. I've done with Vanguard. I've done hundreds of these when I was with Vanguard, and I've done them here at my current custodian at TD Ameritrade. Each process is a little bit different, but there's one thing that's very consistent, is the check needs to go directly to the charity by way of having it payable to the charity. So here's what I mean. Depending on the company, the custodian, they might have a different procedure, and I've dealt with both. You're going to go and you're going to go to the custodian. You're going to say, hey, I want to do a qualified charitable distribution. They're going to say, great, how much? You're going to say 100 grand. And they're going to say, awesome, to what charity? And you're going to tell them the charity name because you will have already confirmed there was a 501c3 organization. The custodian is going to put on the check payable to the charity. It will not be made payable to you, which is what a traditional distribution check would say. Now, one of two things is going to happen at this point. They're either going to send you the check and you can physically hand it over, which is the more reasonable method. It's what's going to happen most. Or the custodians that I've seen sometimes do is they will send it directly to the charity on your behalf in which you will need to follow up with the charity, make sure they receive it. I've seen some crazy things happen. But it needs to be made payable directly to the charity. And that comes from your IRA. That's why there's a specific qualified charitable distribution procedure that you need to follow. It's not a normal distribution. Hopefully this was helpful. Qualified charitable distributions are a great value add for retirees that again are charitably inclined, that don't need the money and that are interested in something like this. If you are, confirm with your custodian or your advisor if this makes sense and the proper timing and amounts that you should be doing. But this is a great tool to help save you on some taxes in retirement and make you feel a little bit better about giving back. Don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions or concerns. Also, I'm linking below my new website. Go check out the new website. You can sign up for newsletters. You can go check out blogs. You can watch other videos and you can contact me if you have any questions. Feel free to like and subscribe. More comments, more subscriptions, more likes help get more videos into the algorithm so we can see more and I can make more and it makes it more worthwhile for all of us. So I appreciate you watching. Hope to talk to you soon.